Well, welcome back for part three. Today we have a special video. You're going to like this one. You are going to like this one. Trust me. We're going to check out this power transformer. And it's not going to be quite like you envisioned because it was not quite like I envisioned. <laughs> All right. Let's go over to the old schematic that I've blown up here. For those of you who followed my Atwater Kent 145 restoration, you remember when we checked out the transformer, the power transformer, we counted the number of wires that should be coming out of the power transformer. So let's, and you know, we had nine, I think it was. We, had, we counted nine on the Atwater Kent schematic, and we did in fact have nine. Well, let's see there. Let's go here and uh, see how many we're supposed to have here. We're supposed to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right. Now, that's exactly the way we did it on the Atwater Kent 145, for those of you who followed that restoration. For those of you who never followed that restoration, you might want to check it out. Let's go over here to our power transformer, and we should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 wires, I said. Okay, 11 wires. So let's see how many we have coming out of the power transformer. Here's the hole. The hole's right here. Okay, we've got 1, 2, 3. There's one down in there. That's 4. That's 5. That's 6. 6? We're supposed to have 11. We've only got six. What is going on here? Now, John told us all you had to do was count the number of wires and compare it to the schematic. Did he know what he was talking about? No, yeah, probably not. <laughs> well, we have a problem. We have a problem. Uh, you know, what do you do about that? We have a power transformer with wires that are not, not matching up to what it says on the schematic. This is a real, this is a real uh, dilemma. What, what's going on here? What you're looking at is uh, an internet website, a restoration where a guy restored one of these exact same radios we're working on now. This is the bottom of it. Here's his power transformer. Let's go down here and look at the top of the transformer. Look at that big old square box on top of that transformer. It's got a tube sitting off to the side. It's got a little plug that you can turn for 110 and 220, I guess it is. Big square box. Let's take another look at it from here. Ooh, look at there, see? Now we don't have that kind of setup in our, in our radio. What's going on here? This radio is an export model. This radio is, it has the capability of 110 and 220 just by moving this plug right here. Let's take a look at ours now. Now, as you can see, we don't have that big box. We just have the standard old uh, transformer with a socket on top for the rectifier. In this case, the 5X4G rectifier. Well, well, what's going on here now? I mean, this is the domestic model. Uh, power transformer, the one I showed you on the computers for export. Well, let's go back to the schematic. Take a look at this uh, socket right here that was shown in that, on sitting on top of that square box. You'll notice that there's two keys, one here, one here. You got that center stud in the center of the tube, and it's got a key, you know, a slot. It's got one. It's got two slots. Well, we don't have this thing here. We do not have this tube. This is the one we have, the 5X4G. We have the rectifier. Oh, man, what do we do now? What do we do now? How do we check out a transformer that doesn't have enough wires, for one thing, and the tube socket's missing? You know, about this time, a fella who's uh, fairly new at this would be about ready to pull his hair out because nothing is matching up. And we're missing, what, five wires? So how do you how do you check this out? You know, yeah, a lot of folks, you know, they'll they'll start firing off emails, get on the antique radio forum, screaming for help, that sort of thing. Which which is what I used to do. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Trust me. 
Well, I tell you guys, let's do a little bit of skull braining here and see if we can't figure out how to check out this transformer to see if it's any good. Even though we don't have a schematic that's going to help us. According to the schematic, uh, we're supposed to have two windings in the primary. These two windings in the primary. And one of them has a, a white, is a white with a black stripe. White with a black stripe. Or as that little TR stands for tracer, that means the stripe. White with a black tracer. Okay? And then we have a white wire and a white wire. Two whites and two whites with black stripes. We do not have two wires that are white with black stripes. We just don't have them. They're not there. Now we do have this one here, but it's not coming out of the power transformer. It's just running from this Bakelite block, runs on over and connects to the switch. Okay, the back of the switch. So we don't have two white wires with black stripes, but ooh, hoo, 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 we do have this white wire here. We have a white wire and we have another white wire right here. Well, son of a gun. We have a white wire and a white wire. I've already marked them with a blue uh, felt tip marker so I wouldn't have any problem finding them for the video. So what does that mean? Well, I'll tell you what that means. It means that we don't have two coils in our primary. We have a power transformer that only has one. Okay, that's what we have right here. And then, of course, over here we have our secondary. And we've got a white wire here and a white wire here. And, of course, this goes out to the, uh, you know, t t eventually comes out to the, uh, to the plug. Okay, bad drawing. So let's, let's ohm out these two white wires. And if we have continuity between them, it means our primary is good. Alright, I've got uh, this red alligator clip, alligator wire, connected to one of the white wires that goes over to the, uh, from the transformer to the switch. I just hooked it right there. Now, <clears throat> I've got this thing set up to where it'll beep if we have continuity. Now, here's the other white wire coming out here. Let's follow it on out, see where it goes, where does it go? It goes over to this contact right here. Let's see if we get a beep when I, when I touch that. Look at there. That proves that we have continuity through the primary of the power transformer. We do not have two coils. We only have one. Okay? Now, wasn't that easy? That is a piece of cake. So that takes care of the primary. Now let's move over to the secondary. Now, according to the schematic, we should have two blue, two yellow, two black, and a yellow with a green tracer, or yellow with a green stripe. Let's try to find the two yellow wires and the yellow with the green tracer. Let me move this light. It might be help you a little bit. Well, there's the yellow wire with the green tracer. I don't know if you can see that too good, but it's got me... Let me move the lamp. It may be washing it out. Yeah, that helps a little bit. Okay. We have a yellow wire here with the green tracer. That's it right there. Coming right out, of the, right out of the hole in the transformer. But where are the two yellow wires? This is the yellow with the green tracer, but... Where are the two yellow wires? Well, it says here that one is connected to pin three on the tube socket of the rectifier and pin 5 on the tube socket of the rectifier. So if I stick my probe here it should measure all the way down, all the way across, all the way up to pin 5. Let's stick our probes in that socket on top of that transformer and see if we get some continuity between pins 3 and 5. There's the key on the socket right there, the slot where the tube key fits in. When you're counting pins from the bottom, you count them clockwise. When you're counting the pins from the top, if you'll remember back a couple of videos, those of you who keep up with my videos, 
if you count it from the top, it's counterclockwise. So this would be one, remember, we're looking for pins three and five. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Let's get that one in first. And then we've got pin one, two, three. If, if this winding right here is any good, I should get, let me see, it says 64 and one half, it looks like 65. I should get somewhere around 100 and, uh, 129 ohms across that. Let's go ahead and turn it on and see what we get, if anything. 128.5. That's pretty darn good. Guess what? That coil is good. Now we have to check from the center tap to pin 3 and the center tap to pin 5. So let's set that up. Our yellow and green uh, center tap wire comes down and it's soldered to one end of this candom resistor. So let's go ahead and hook up one of our leads to it with an alligator clip. Now we'll go to the other side and take the other probe here and stick it in the socket and see what we get. All right, here's the setup we have. We just clipped our alligator clip, our gator wire right there on the end of this candom resistor, okay? We just connected it right there. So now we'll go ahead and I will test pin three and pin five, just to make sure that this wire is connected to both sides, okay? Let's do that. All right, again, we're counting counterclockwise because we're looking at it from the top. So that's one, two, three. You should get 60 something. There it is. 67, 66, good enough. Now let's go to pin four, uh, five. Four, five. Again, counting counterclockwise. And there we go, 60.6. That's good. We just proved that this coil is good all the way through, and we just proved that both sides are connected to the center tap. Now let's go up and find out these two blue wires. Let's go ahead and, you know, poke our little probes in pin 7 and 8 and see if we get continuity through this coil. This stuff is really easy, isn't it? I mean, it's really simple when you stop and think about it. This is, it's not even a brain teaser. Probably the most complicated thing was, you know, figuring out that we did not have two coils. We only had one. But there again, it just took a little common sense, a little patience, and a little proper judgment, and a little eyeballing to figure it all out. Let's check the two blue wires. We don't see these blue wires because they're connected up. They run from the transformer up inside the socket that's sitting on top of the transformer, so you don't see them. Just like we didn't see these two yellow wires. They weren't there either. They're there, but we just can't see them. We can't see them because they've been run up through the inside of the transformer up to the bottom side of the socket. That's why we can't see them. So they're underneath that, that clamshell right there. Let's go ahead and stick these in, uh, what pin did I say it was? Oh yeah, seven and eight, the two blue wires. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then eight. Let's see what we get. Continuity, people. Continuity. The coil is good. The last thing to check is from ground up through this coil down and over to the filament on the pilot light. Okay? Or the, the you know, the dial light. So what I'm going to do is connected to the chassis through ground here and here we only have one light so what I'm going to do is is remove it from the ground connection so we should be able to you know hook one of our meter leads to the chassis which is ground read up through the coil down around and over to where the light bulb socket meets you know that little round knob that little round button on the bottom of the light bulb socket that little silver thing we touch right there we'll take the bulb out We'll touch right there and we should get continuity.
Let's do that. I just removed the dial light from this bracket right here. It was slid up on there like so. And that's how it got its ground. However, I could not get the bulb out. I need to get that bulb out of there so I can stick my probe down in there, you know, where the wire comes up on that little button that makes contact with the bottom of the bulb. I need to read from ground to the end of this wire right here, and I cannot get that bulb. I've tried everything. It's, a, it's what they call a bayonet bulb. You know, it has one of those little pins on the side of the bulb base, one on each side. You're supposed to be able to twist it to the left. You'll push it in, twist it to the left, and the bulb comes out. Well, check this out. I have never seen anything like this yet. The reason I can't get the bulb out is because it's been the other side has been soldered. <laughs> they got a good ground connection there by soldering it. Oh, man, you know, I can't read. I, I can't. <sighs> well, what am I going to do about that? Well, I'll tell you what. I, I don't want to desolder it and everything if the bulb is good to go. And I, you know, I'll tell you what we're going to do about that. We're going to stick a probe down from the rear and touch that knob. That's what we're going to do. We're going to measure from ground to that little connection down there that goes to the filament. We don't have to worry about it being grounded though because it's off the ground, so it's isolated. So let me set that up. All right, I've got the uh, one side of the multimeter connected to ground with the gator wire. Now the trick is to thread this uh, other probe down in here without touching anything and see what happens. See if we can get a, a sound out of our out of our multimeter. Let me go ahead and carefully thread this down right along the wire. Look at there. That's it. That is it folks. We are done with the power transformer. Well that's it everybody. We have determined that all of these coils are good. We have determined that we only have a single coil here. We do not have this tube socket. We do not have all this associated wiring. Now we do have the you know the power plug and a couple of caps here inside of a uh, Bakelite block, and we do have the on-off switch. Although the on-off switch is not working, the one they put in there is not working. So I'm going to have to come up with something different on that. But anyway, that's where we sit right now. Good to go, huh? Tell you what, let's check out the coil on that shadow meter next. We should have at least a thousand ohms uh, on this thing because um, there's a lot of wire on that thing. But before I even make it, try to make any, any veins for inside there, let's see if it's any good. Okay, I've got one wire hooked up there, and I'm going to touch this other one. Watch our uh, meter, see what we get. Oh, we got 1500 ohms, 16, for about 1400, 1500 ohms. Okay, the coil is good. Well, that's it for now, guys. Uh, we had a pretty good uh, video here. I hope you all learned something. Uh, I think between now and next time, I'll clean out the socket holes on all the sockets. And uh, all the 6J5 tubes. I think, I think I'm going to show you a little something about those 6J5 tubes also. And uh, maybe figure out where we need to put in, you know, some new... Uh, electrolytics and maybe some change out a few wax capacitors to try to get this uh, radio playing. All I want to do is get it playing and then we can mess around with a few of the you know the other little items. Hopefully I'll also have some good news on that on off uh, tone control switch that had the broken shaft. Uh, I've got something going on that but <clears throat> there's no guarantees. Anyway until next time this is John.